Welcome to today's Fraunhofer HHI briefing session at Fraunhofer Digital Media's bi-weekly special. As Fraunhofer HHI, we are part of this Fraunhofer business area. My name is Maria Ott and I'm the project manager of Fraunhofer HHI's 3IT Innovation Center for Immersive Imaging Technologies. Today we're going to talk with Iago Sanchez de la Fuente and Robert Scopin, the leading experts on VVC system integration at Fraunhofer HHI. As we already know, the next generation video coding standard VVC was finalized last year and just recently technical work on most of the related system specifications concluded. Today we want to find out what has happened in this regard and which new features VVC will bring to multimedia systems. Hello Robert, hello Iago, welcome. How are you today? Thanks for having us. Hi, thank you, thank you very much. So as a starter I would like to understand what is meant uh, by system integration of VVC? Why is this so important? Yeah, so before customers can just switch on the TV and watch their favorite series on Netflix or call their loved ones using Skype, uh, with a brand new codec, there has to be some integration work. Um, imagine such complex applications as a layer cake, where the video codec is just a frosting on top and under that come layers of layers of core communication protocols that are very application specific and that need to be adapted and extended to really allow using the codec and make use of all the new features, make it accessible, so to speak. Okay. Um, and could you give us an example of this application specific protocols that would need to handle VVC um, codec media? Sure. Um, as Robert mentioned, there are different applications. Some of them may be uh, real-time communication services like Skype or Teams, Zoom, something like that. And then um, those, for example, are based on the so-called the real-time transfer protocol. And basically, this one specifies how you take the video quality data and you fragment it, you put that into packets and transmit it so that you fulfill some of, for example, the latency constraints that you have might have, might have in a real-time communication service. Other examples might be um, regular streaming services where you just stream the data to many users and users may have different uh, available throughputs, they may have different capabilities, they have to switch from one to another. And for those, for example, they are based on, on the so-called ISO based media file format, for example, which specifies how to store that data into a file and how you chop that uh, file into segments. Then there's file protocols like Dash or HLS that specify how you expose those, those segments to the users and then they can switch from one to another. Or even if you go to broadcast scenarios, uh, like in DVB-T2, for example, used in Germany for, for broadcast, they rely on an older um, standard called MPEG-2 transport stream. So you see each application have, may have different uh, requirements, uh, for example, in terms of, of uh, latency constraints. And then there's different gluing or different protocols that put that video data into the transport mechanism. So what are these new features uh, of VVC that were not available in earlier generations? In VVC, you can say that really, apart from the regular focus on of video coding uh, evolution, like increasing the coding efficiency, using half the bitrate for the same quality, there was also a focus on introducing new features to the, to the codec, hence the name versatile video coding. And um, our team here at HHI, the Multimedia Communications Group, has a strong focus on video streaming, particularly new emerging media types like 360 degree video. We've contributed a lot to the MPEG UMAF standard uh, not long ago, and we were able to use that experience in making some design choices uh, on the video coding side, for example. There's this um, one interesting feature called sub-pictures to encode independent regions within a video. And it really uh, simplifies processing a lot and a lot of the experience we had we could uh, bring in there and simplify the design. Uh, another interesting feature is reference picture resampling. This allows um, an encoder to change the video resolution over time without sending specially uh, intracoded pictures uh, that are very costly from a bitrate perspective, so to say. And in VVC, this is not necessary anymore. And yeah, that was a new core feature introduced in, in VVC. And could you elaborate how uh, such a technique would be used and how it is integrated into the related applications? Sure. For example, RPR, re um, reference picture resampling, resampling was mainly designed for uh, adapting to 
fluctuating throughput. Let's say we take, for example, the real-time communication services uh, as an example. And during a session, the, the available throughput drops, so the, quality, the, the bit rate that you can send through the network decreases sharply. So you have to react to that in, in, real, in real time, and you have to provide ways to, to send a lower bitrate video, but still be able to send something. There are different ways to do so. One way is to use a different or coarser quantization step, but at some point there are some limits where changing that doesn't bring you a good solution. Let's say you could end up with really bad quality if you go to that way. So one option is to really reduce the resolution that you're sending. The problem is that, as Robert mentioned, if you, if you want to reduce the resolution with previous codecs, you had to send very costly intra uh, pictures which broke the prediction to the past. And in VVC this time, there's a technique that is called RPR that allows you to not break the prediction, but do this switch into a lower resolution. Interestingly enough, for, for this example in real-time communication, there was nothing specific that had to be specified for the real-time transport protocol. The main goal that we had there was learning from the past, uh, how it was integrated for previous codes like ABC or HEVC, uh, to take the tools or, that were really implemented and used in reality and just integrate VVC into such a simplified, let's say, simplified version of what we had, this solid uh, solution that we had from the past. Okay, so uh, what are other applications where the new feature of EVC come into play? I think streaming applications will benefit most from the new features of EVC. So sub-pictures and reference picture resampling will both simplify processing and increase coding efficiency. Take reference picture resampling for example. As Jago mentioned, content is segmented over time and different variants of each segment are offered to the client. The client can switch between the variants depending on his throughput and usually with last generation codecs you would have to have this prediction break at each segment boundary so that the switching can occur but with vvc now this is able or this is possible to do without this prediction break that uh, impact the coding efficiency significantly and in vvc now we when we create the bit streams in a very intricate way then this switching can occur uh, at high coding efficiency even for live services with very short segment lengths. Our very own VVC encoder, VVENC, um, that's open source and publicly available, that uh, already features such a mode. And um, yeah, I think we also brought um, related contributions to standardization. And yeah, VVC offers really uh, most benefit in these scenarios, I think. That's interesting. Um so what is the impact of this new reference picture resampling feature in VVC from the perspective of uh, system layer integration? I would say that in general, uh, when it comes to system layer integration, the ISO-based media file format is the one that is used at uh, broadest spectrum, I would say, uh, like to um, most various uh, applications. And in that sense, uh, this is the one that has been not only for reference picture sampling, but for other tools is the one that has been more impacted about uh, this flexibility or versatility from BBC. So when it comes to the integration, for example, of reference picture sampling, uh, Robert was mentioning about this uh, costly intra-coded pictures that break prediction to the past, but this is only one part of why when doing resolution switch, you need to break that prediction, like using this new structure. So this, this prediction that VVC allows you now to reference different resolution pictures, but others are, for example, some parameters, some information that is within the bit stream. You are not allowed to change it uh, in any way. And that was one of the uh, of the things that we noticed, we noticed when integrating uh, this technology into, into the ISO-based media file format, that if we had done that as it was done before for previous standards like ABC or HEVC, we wouldn't be able, in all cases, to do this resolution switching. Without going to specific problems, this was, some, so this was one of the things that we had to take into account when designing the system integration into the file format. All right. Um, you also mentioned sub-pictures, Robert? Yeah, that's also an interesting feature of VPC. Um, we did a lot of uh, research for 360-degree video transmission, and for this particular application, VVC offers this feature of independently coded regions called sub-pictures. And um, basically, when you used a last generation codec like HVC for such an application, you would chop up the, the video into independently coded tiles, 
offer them at various resolution and the client could select what tiles to download in high resolution for the viewport, for example. And for the rest that's not in the viewport, um, you would just download some fallback version. And then to reintegrate all these downloaded tiles into a single bitstream, the client would have to do considerable work using a last generation codec. VVC, the design choices made there, uh, has a very flexible addressing scheme that allows to re create a joint bitstream very easily from the client perspective. So this is one example where the design choices made on the video codec side considerably reduce complexity in the ISO-based media file format side. And there are other specific um, tools, let's, let's call it tools, in the file format to, for integration of sub-pictures, like um, when, a, when a client selects some sub-pictures for a bitstream, it still has to make sure it can decode the bitstream in real time without dropping pictures or something. So there needs to be some way of indicating the decoding complexity associated with this set of tiles. Or uh, even more fancy is um, in, in the video codec you have some sort of control data and uh, that depends on your clients, on your tile selection. In the file format for VVC, we have this sort of template control parameter that uh, can be filled out by the client depending on his selection. And this is much more efficient and much more flexible than the solution we had for HEVC where you had ready-made control data for a fixed number of um, variants. Okay, so, but what about the more traditional broadcast world? Will VVC also, also be um, able to excel here? It will excel, but mainly due to its efficiency. I would say there's nothing in particular in the system integration that was taken into account. Similar to what is happening to the RTP payload format for VVC that we mentioned before, that there the design choice was what was the basic functionality that was needed just to enable VVC running on top of it. So the design in the broadcast scenario was exactly the same since in broadcast we are not envisioning this very wide range of applications that I was mentioning for the, for the streaming cases, for example. So there the, the design goal was, let's keep it sim simple, take what we learned from the past and just mm, enable VVC on that system. All right, you guys, thank you very much for this very interesting insight. And uh, that concludes our interview with the two leading experts on VVC systems integration at Fraunhofer HHI. Thank you again to Jago and Robert. And thank you to everyone for tuning in to today's Fraunhofer HHI briefing session at Fraunhofer Digital Media's bi-weekly special. We hope you enjoyed it and got a good overview about what's going on. You want to find out more about the topic, then don't miss the opportunity to talk to our uh, experts directly in our high table briefing next week. You can find the link for the registration on Fraunhofer Digital Media's website directly next to the video. This is also the place where you can keep updated on all um, our next scheduled topics. Don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions or concerns and stay tuned. <laughs>